Today is October 9th, 2024. My name is Nicodemus and welcome back to the Disruptive Technologies Podcast, your go-to source for the latest breakthroughs and updates in cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, robotics, and more. Today, we're diving into some of the most compelling tech stories making headlines right now. From the dominance of dollar cost averaging in crypto investing to the resurgence of Bitcoin staking, we've got a lineup that you're not going to want to miss. We'll also explore Crypto.com's legal battle with the SEC, Midas' expansion of tokenized treasury bills, the rise of AI-fueled crypto scams, and much more. So sit back, relax, and let's disrupt. Dollar cost averaging has emerged as a dominant strategy for most crypto investors. A recent survey by Kraken revealed that 83% of crypto investors have used DCA, with 59% considering it their primary strategy. This time-tested approach involves buying small amounts over time. Now, it's been around for over 75 years and is especially useful in volatile markets like cryptocurrency. According to the survey, 46% of investors use DCA to hedge against market volatility, benefiting from consistent investments regardless of market conditions. For lower income earners, DCA provides a way to stay disciplined in their investing habits, while higher earners focus more on managing the risk of volatility. Interestingly, the survey also found that 74% of crypto investors check the markets much more frequently than traditional investors, with older investors from 45 to 60 more likely to monitor their investments closely than younger investors aged 18 to 34. Higher income investors are more likely to double down on DCA during market downturns, whereas lower income investors may stop trading or sell off during periods of uncertainty. This demonstrates the broader appeal of DCA across different income levels, with motivations varying based on financial circumstances. While DCA remains a popular strategy, other investment opportunities are also emerging in the crypto space. Babylon's latest Bitcoin staking event is drawing considerable interest. Let's see what's happening. Babylon is back with a new Bitcoin staking event called CAP2, which began this week. It allows users to stake up to 500 Bitcoin per transaction across 10 Bitcoin blocks. The event started at block 864790 and will close at 864799, offering a staking window that's expected to last just about 1 hour and 40 minutes, assuming the average 10 minute block time holds. In August, Babylon's first staking round capped at 1000 Bitcoin in just 6 blocks, lasting only 74 minutes. That shows the strong demand for Bitcoin staking. Cap 2 could seed similar enthusiasm from investors. Babylon intends to unlock the potential of Bitcoin for proof-of-stake chains, an approach common on Ethereum, but less so on Bitcoin. Earlier this year, the project raised $70 million in funding, adding to the $18 million raised in December. All eyes are now on how quickly Cap2 will reach its staking limit. As Babylon pushes the boundary of Bitcoin utility, other crypto companies are grappling with regulatory challenges. Crypto.com's legal battle with the SEC is a notable example. Let's dive into the details. Crypto.com has filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Securities Exchange Commission, specifically targeting its chair, Gary Gensler, and the commissioners. This action follows the SEC's issuance of a Wells notice to the company, signaling possible enforcement action. CEO Chris Marzalek described the lawsuit as a necessary step to protect crypto's future in the U.S., criticizing the SEC's approach as detrimental to over 50 million American crypto holders. The SEC has been pursuing aggressive enforcement measures across the crypto sector, issuing notices to numerous companies, including OpenSea, Binance, and Uniswap. Crypto.com's lawsuit seeks relief from what it considers to be the SEC's unlawful expansion of jurisdiction, arguing that the agency wrongly defines nearly all tokens as securities, except for Bitcoin and Ethereum. This classification broadly affects how tokens are regulated under federal securities laws. This case underscores the ongoing struggle between regulators and the crypto industry, with Crypto.com fighting to avoid being labeled as an unregistered broker-dealer. The company has also petitioned the SEC and the Commodity Futures Trading Commission to resolve jurisdictional questions about cryptocurrency derivatives. Meanwhile, Crypto.com's native token, Kronos, saw a drop of 4.7% following the news of the lawsuit. While Crypto.com battles regulators, Midas is making strides in expanding access to traditional financial products through tokenization. Let's see how they're making treasury investments more accessible. Midas has expanded access to its tokenized U.S. treasury bills and yield-bearing carry trade products. This follows regulatory approval in Liechtenstein. The approval allows Midas to remove the $100,000 minimum investment and accreditation requirements for its MT bill and M basis tokens, making these products accessible to a broader audience through a simple one-click process. The tokens are available globally, except in the U.S. and sanctioned countries. Midas' tokenized treasury bills are backed by BlackRock's short-term treasury bill ETF, which has already attracted $5 million in deposits. 
The broader market for tokenized T-bills has grown significantly, tripling to $2.3 billion in the past year as major financial players like BlackRock entered the space. Additionally, Midas' new M-Basis token launched earlier this year, and it now has over $4 million in assets under management. The approval from Liechtenstein's Financial Market Authority allows Midas to offer these products across Europe through a process known as passporting, making it one of the few platforms to provide compliant, tokenized, real-world assets without investment thresholds. By combining DeFi accessibility with traditional financial products, Midas is pushing the boundaries of how investors interact with traditional assets. As tokenization expands, the crypto sector faces challenges from increasing fraud. AI and defake technology are making scams more sophisticated. Let's explore the latest findings from the United Nations. The United Nations is raising alarms about the growing number of unlicensed crypto operations in Southeast Asia. In a recent report, the UN called for making a criminal offense to run a virtual asset service provider without a license. Criminal groups, including drug traffickers, cyber criminals, and human traffickers, are increasingly using unregulated crypto services to move large amounts of money, with some linked to sanctioned entities like North Korea's Lazarus Group. The booming online fraud industry in the region is often hidden behind office blocks or casino complexes. That's become a major problem. These groups have favored cryptocurrencies for their ease of cross-border transactions and limited regulatory oversight. The UN report highlighted pig butchering schemes. That's where the fraudsters gain victims' trust through online relationships before persuading them to invest in fake platforms. And in a modern twist, the newer scams also incorporate AI and deepfake technology to add layers of sophistication. The report calls for better monitoring of organized crimes involvement in casinos and cyber fraud operations, along with more training for authorities to detect money laundering activities linked to online gambling and crypto. With over 220,000 people involved in scam operations in Cambodia and Myanmar, many of those folks were lured under false pretenses. So the scale of this criminal ecosystem is a growing concern that governments need to address and need to address urgently. While scams remain a challenge, macroeconomic shifts can also impact the crypto space. China's recent market downturn has some analysts eyeing crypto as an alternative investment. Let's see why. Chinese stocks took a sharp hit this week as Beijing decided against introducing new stimulus measures. This led to investor disappointment. After weeks of anticipation that China's state economic body, the NDRC, would continue measures to support the slowing economy, the lack of action has resulted in significant market losses. Stocks like Alibaba and JD.com are traded in Hong Kong, and they fell 8 and 12 percent respectively. The MSCI Asia Pacific Index also experienced its steepest drop in a month, while Hong Kong had its worst single day loss since 2008. Market volatility spiked, with the VIX rising by 15 percent, indicating increased uncertainty. However, analysts at QCP Capital see this dip as a potential opportunity for capital to flow into crypto, viewing it as evidence of the growing role of cryptocurrencies as an alternative risk asset. Despite these expectations, Bitcoin's prices remain steadily at around $62,400, with derivatives markets reflecting low expected volatility. Even though China previously announced measures like mortgage cuts and bank lending incentives in late September, the market remains sluggish. With Beijing remaining confident in its ability to achieve a 5% growth target, investors continue to look for alternative opportunities such as cryptocurrencies. And speaking of the future, there are some bold predictions about where Bitcoin could be headed depending on the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. Let's see what Standard Charter's Jeff Kendrick has to say. Jeff Kendrick is the leading analyst at Standard Charter. He predicts significant gains for key cryptocurrencies by the end of 2025, contingent on the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. Kendrick forecasts that if Donald Trump wins the presidency, Solana could rise fivefold, Ethereum could quadruple, and Bitcoin could triple in value. He specifically sees a Trump administration as more favorable to Solana, increasing the likelihood of a Solana ETF approval, a potential catalyst for rapid growth. Kendrick explains that for Solana to reach his ambitious price target, its network throughput must increase by 1 to 400 times. The Firedancer software is intended to enhance Solana's transaction speeds to 1 million per second. It's crucial for achieving these goals. Solana must also expand into sectors like finance and decentralized physical infrastructure to fully realize its potential. On the other hand, Kendrick suggests that if Kamala Harris becomes president, Bitcoin would outperform Ethereum which would in turn outperform Solana. He predicts that Ethereum could reach 7,000 and Bitcoin could reach 200,000 by 2025, regardless of who wins the election. While bold predictions capture attention, the reality for some in the crypto industry is more challenging. Bitcoin miners, for instance, are facing declining revenues for the third consecutive month. Let's talk about why. 
Publicly traded Bitcoin miners experienced their third consecutive month of falling daily revenues in September, as rising network difficulties squeezed earnings despite a 7% increase in Bitcoin's price during the month. The network's hash rate climbed to 643 exahashes per second. That's up 2% from August, making mining operations less profitable. Earnings per exahash dropped by 6%, averaging $42,100. Despite these challenges, the combined market cap of 14 U.S. listed Bitcoin miners grew by 4%, reaching $21 billion. Marathon increased production by 6%, mining 705 Bitcoin, and maintained holdings at nearly 27,000 Bitcoin. Riot Platforms mined 412 Bitcoin, which is a 28% increase due to operational upgrades, while CleanSpark produced 493 Bitcoin and reported year-over-year -year stock growth of 145%. On the other hand, Bitfarm saw a 7% decline in production and Core Scientific mined slightly less than the previous month. While some miners held onto their Bitcoin, Cypher Mining sold 923 Bitcoin even though they only mined 155 Bitcoin. As miners continue to navigate the rising network difficulty and operational costs, several are shifting towards AI-focused infrastructure, which is expected to open new revenue streams. From mining challenges to community initiatives, token burns are one-way projects are trying to drive engagement and value. Let's see what Notcoin and Dogs Community have planned. Notcoin in the meme coin project Dogs Community are planning a token burn worth $4 million. This decision was made following a community vote, leading to the upcoming destruction of Not and Dogs tokens to permanently reduce their total supply. Most of the burn will involve dogs tokens, with about 6 billion unclaimed tokens set aside for charitable donations, which the community will decide upon. Notcoin has a market cap of over $800 million, with each token priced well under a cent apiece. The dogs tokens holds a market cap of $370 million. The burn aims to enhance scarcity, potentially increasing long-term value for token holders. About $3.5 million of the total burn will be dogs tokens. Notcoin, known for its role in Tap to Earn Gaming on Telegram, and Dogs Community, inspired by Pavel Durov's dog Spotty, both have large followings and millions of token holders. Built on the Ton blockchain, these projects leverage community-driven initiatives like token burns to demonstrate their commitment to scarcity and long-term value creation. And that's going to do it for today's episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We've journeyed through the evolving landscape of crypto investments, investigated regulatory challenges, and examined how emerging technologies are reshaping our world, for better or worse. Please take a minute to like, follow, and subscribe so we can reach other listeners that are just like you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Disruptive Technologies Podcast. We'll see you next time.